Hallelujah. Let us pray together. Lift your hands and thank God for today. Thank God for his blessings in the new year. God is going to give you a word that is going to help you in the new year to do well. God is going to bless you with his word, his spirit. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Kalama Shandala Baba. Mela Mananda Simbala Barekitana Mede Shimbala Basimedeka Reveles. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Holy Spirit, guide us. Lead us, Lord, into your perfect will. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Right. Are you glad to be here today? Amen. God is going to do something wonderful in your life this year. And I'm going to preach to you and tell all the wonderful things that God has for you are manifest in the name of Jesus. This year, you are going to receive the word and you are going to receive the word and you are going to receive the word until you become what God has intended you to become. I told you, I don't know whether it was the 31st night or one of the nights, hips lemo, kemusu agbo femo, eba lefio fio. Do you understand that? What it means is the widening of the hips and the becoming big of the stomach, it comes what? Few, few, small, small. So God is going to make you big and mighty. Not physically, in the spirit. And in every other positive way. Hips lemo. Kemusu agbo femo. Ebale, few, few. If you don't speak down, at least this one, you must know it. You must only know one thing because it is a phrase in the church. It's one of the official Sentences in the church. Hallelujah. Now, you must turn with me to the favorite, my favorite passage in the Bible, Luke chapter 15. The story of the prodigal son. Verse 11 and the King James. It says, a certain man had two sons. Amen. And the younger of them said to his father, Father... Give me the portion of goods that followeth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance on riotous living. And when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. And no man, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Now, you wouldn't understand feeding of swine until you go to Israel. They don't like pigs at all. There is no pig there. I was in Jerusalem once, and I asked, could I, they said they have beef, chicken, this. I said, please, do you have any pork? And the man looked at me, pork? <laughs> it's an abomination. We don't eat pork here. So not that you are eating the pork, but you are feeding the pork. Hey. Then he has really fallen below sea level. And the Bible says he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. Now this word husks, husks that the swine did eat, is an old word. It means the outside. It's the outside of the watermelon. How many have eaten the inside of the watermelon before? Uh-huh. <laughs> but the pigs were being given the outside of the watermelon. And this boy was so hungry that he wanted to eat the outside of the watermelon. Hey! And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger? I will arise. 
Everybody say, I will arise in 2010 in the name of Jesus. Ah, every sitting down that you sat down in 2009, this year you shall arise in the name of Jesus and you shall move forward in the name of Jesus. I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Amen. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Amen. And he arose and he came to his father. Amen. Now, in 2010, I want us to learn something that I'm sharing from this little book called Opportunities. God gives us opportunities. There is a phrase that we, we say. It says, opportunity strikes but once. Have you heard that before? We often get certain opportunities only once. So you must not waste your opportunities. Now the word prodigal is the greatest surprise as far as English language goes. Has been my greatest surprise. I used to think that prodigal son means the bad boy. The rebellious son. Is that not what they say in the tree? Or bad is said for? The son who spoils things. But prodigal son does not mean the bad boy at all. It means the son who wastes things. When you talk about prodigality, you are speaking about wastefulness. Prodigal, to be prodigal, you know, uh, when you have soap in you are bathing, you have soap and you leave the water, go on the soap. I mean, after the, you finish bathing, the, the soap is in the water. You are being prodigal with your soap. Because after the soap has sat in the water for a long time, when you come, it's half. So you are being prodigal with your soap. It doesn't mean you are a bath rebellious soap user. You are wasting the soap. Ghana is pumping water from Wager Dam into Accra. But we are being prodigal with our water. Prodigality. Because most of the water that is pumped into the system is wasted. So you will notice, those of you who have been living in Accra for some time, that if the water is still flowing in your area, the pressure has gone down. How many have noticed that if it is flowing, it has gone down? How many have noticed that it has stopped flowing? Wave to me. How many have noticed that it comes once in a while? Uh-huh. It's because it is once in six months in your area. Once in six months. And nowadays, you cannot even get the uh, uh, you know, your friend is a water tanker to come. Because they, they don't even come. You get it? Meanwhile, we have a lot of water going into the system. So wasting is the reason which creates differences between people. Sometimes you see two children that come out of one father and one mother. And then you would have thought that because they are both from the same parents, they are both going to be equally rich, isn't it? But you realize that as the time goes by, differences come up. And the difference comes from the prodigal or non-prodigal behavior. The opposite of prodigality is frugality. Okay? So I, actually, this book used to be called Prodigality. But nobody understood the English word, so I just changed it to opportunities. And now I'm going to change it again. Yeah. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change the name of this book again. All right? So get a copy whilst it's called Opportunities. So that at least you have one. Amen. And the older son was rich, and the father said to him, All the things I have, all my houses, my cars, my cows, everything is for you, my boy. So at the end of this story, one was rich and one was poor. 
what caused riches to come to one and what caused poverty to come to another? You see, you may not really know, but this is the great key to what causes riches and what causes poverty. That's why I share that this book is a book of prosperity. But it is hidden because the treasures are hidden. Now, God wants us to be blessed. And he wants us to realize that he has given all of us a fair portion. I remember one day I, I went to my father and I asked him for something. Actually, it was something that I shouldn't really have asked him for. Do you get it? And do you know the answer he gave me? He said, I have other children as well. What do you think that means? Well, if your father tells you, look, I have other children, it means one of the ch children is trying to get a lot of things. So my father said to me, I have other children. I cannot give this to you. I have other children as well. I remember one day my mother sat me down and she showed me, she said, whatever I have given to you, I have given to your sister, I have given to them. She showed me, she said, I have given everybody the same. Is that not what her parents are? Parents will give all children the same. To give all of them a fair start. An equal chance to do well. Now, do you think God look at Africa and he look at Ghana and say, mm, as for the black people, I won't give them. I'm going to give the Americans. And I'm going to give the white people. But I'm not going to give the black people. So then God took away riches from the black people and gave all the riches to the white people. No! He has given all of us the same. But you see, these two boys all started out the same. Then as time went on, then we see that differences begin to come. Huh. It's from the way... You know, how many have been to Temamoto Way before? Temamoto, if you have not been, please, you must go. If you are a tourist in Ghana, at least you must. It's, it's our only motorway since our independence. We have one motorway, one historic motorway. Two lanes going, two lanes coming. Hey. When you go to the beginning of the motorway, when we are paying the tolls, you will see a lot of cars together. Old, new, different. But when you get onto the motorway, then the differences begin to come out. Then you see sometimes a car that you used to be, you were paying the toll at the same time. He's far away. You see a car that you were paying at all. He has even reached Tema and he's in, in the town. Whilst you are coolly going. You are coolly going. Fio, fio. Ebale, fio, fio. So at the beginning of life, everybody looks the same. God gives everybody the same. He gives all of us opportunities. That's why the book is called Opportunities. But when life starts and everybody finishes paying the toll and enters the motorway, then you begin to see the differences. And you see, some are, you see somebody in a very powerful car. One of the dangerous cars to drive is a BMW or a Golf. Those VW cars. They are very dangerous. Do you know why? They are too fast. When you press, no. recently I was driving a VW. I said, no, this car is dangerous for me because I go too fast. When I press, no, it's fast. It's immediately on the move. If you want to go slower, drive a Benz. I had a friend who was driving too fast. He was driving a BMW, so he changed to Benz. He said, oh, this one is better. But when I press, it doesn't go. It just feel, feel. It, it goes feel, feel. Slowly. Then in the end, it will be fast, but slower. Hey. So you see somebody driving a BMW. He's got the potential, but he's far behind. Ooh. Or your bar. <laughs> <laughs> I am, uh, is that not what they say? <laughs> it's a woman. <laughs> she has got a posh car, good car with power, but how she's driving it, you know? <laughs> eh? Uh, 
All right. So you see, some people have got the car, they got it, but they are wasting it. They are wasting it. They are wasting their potential. They could have been 21 kilometers, three minutes, they would have been there at the end of the motorway. Anyway, so God loves all of us. He likes you. Ah, he loves Ghana. When God was sharing money in the world, ah, he came with his angels. He went to Abbas. He said, let me hide something here. And he went to Abbas. And he went and hid some gold. Under. That the angel was bringing to him. No, take it down. Take it down. Deeper. That he took this angel to Insuta. He said, put some manganese there. Come on, I'm manganese. Then he took this angel to Aquitia. I said, look, I've got some special glassy diamond. Let's put some diamonds here. Then Takwa, I said, put some gold there. And then where do they have bauxite? There are some mountains they have. You, don't, you, you do not do geography. You say you are not benefiting from your education. You don't know where we find bauxite in Ghana. You are bereft of information. Bauxite and then oil. God gave us oil. He said, look, come, let me take you somewhere. There is oil from half a city to Keta. It's all in front of us like that. The whole line, angels came and put it there. And we said, I don't have anything. I don't have anything to prosper with. It is America. I want to go to America. Meanwhile, it is with us. Oranges, oranges. We have oranges in Ghana. More. Ten for one city. Ten orange, twelve oranges for one city. More. People are using orange juice to make riches. We are the. Uh, give me two akutu, please. <laughs> we are not able to convert it into money. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Hey. <laughs> So, brothers and sisters, God has given... Look, my father told me, you are not my only child. You are not my only child. I have other children. And I'm going to give something to all of them. That's what God is saying to us. You, you are, America is not his only child. He has given something to all. And in this church, he has given something to everybody. And I want you not to waste what you have. Because the prodigal means you wasted it. Now, what did the boy waste? He wasted his money. He wasted, he wasted, his, he wasted his house. He wasted his sonship. In my book here, I teach about, he wasted his, his, his position as a son. He wasted the chance that he had to be somebody. By going out on a wild goose chase to get something that was imaginary. You know, out there, it always looks more beautiful. Because the spirit of greed, there are seven spirits that cause that. But sometimes what you have, you have it with you, but you don't like it. I want something there. But God is telling you, look at me, I'm standing here, I'm preaching to you. Huh? I'm preaching to you wisdom that can make you prosper. Sometimes I talk to pastors and say, you know, but our church is in a classroom. I said, my church was in the classroom. I started my church in the classroom. So, but there are other churches in the school. <laughs> when we are doing praise and worship, another church is upstairs. We are two. We were two churches. We were also in classroom with others. We started with three people, five people, pray on the beach. So here I am, sharing with you wisdom, how you can climb from where you are. If I was doing business, if this was a business, it would be a successful business. It's interesting, when you are in the house with something, you don't see how beautiful it is. Many times I look at my wife and I just look and say, oh, wait, are you beautiful? Oh, yeah, because, because, you see, sometimes you are with something, but you don't even notice because it's always passing up and down. You just see the thing passing in front of you. You say, no, wait, are you, are you very beautiful? Are you, are you beautiful? Tell somebody, are you beautiful? <laughs> it's true. But you see, you have to step back and look. Otherwise, you will not recognize. And that spirit, the spirit of a what? You read them. There are seven of them. Oh, 
let's pray that I'm going to have a chance to share this, to finish preaching. I'm not, I'm not finished, and I can see the clock is going by. And I don't, I'm not encouraged by this clock at all. And I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not happy about what I'm seeing up there on the clock. It's a rebellious clock. It's going out of, out of hand, going too fast. <laughs> You are preaching anointing is flowing and you see and the clock is telling you, warning you. <laughs> hey. So brothers and sisters, sometimes you have something but you wasted, you waste your opportunity. Here you've got a pastor. He's written a lot of books. How many churches are there where the pastors have written books? That you can understand in your language with examples that you can understand. But you see, we look at it Give me two buffaloes and one muscatella, please. Can I have one muscatella and a two, one kebab and two buffaloes? And sausage roll. Sausage kebab. No, no, not ordinary sausage kebab, please. How much is one kebab? And this is two cities, two, two kebabs. Just two kebabs. You see, what you buy determines how your future will be. What you buy, it determines what your future is going to be. Many years ago, I was in England. I spent some months there working. I was in a medical school then. When I was leaving, I bought only one thing. Yeah, I used all my money and I bought one thing. It was very expensive. It was called a Dick's Bible. I didn't buy shoes, shirts, trousers, Ties, uh, what? Aftershave lotion, shoes, socks, polish, chains. Are you brothers got a nice chain here? <laughs> I just bought one thing, but in those days it was not a common Bible. I ordered it from Scotland. I paid 70 something pounds in those days for that Bible. That's the only thing. What you buy determines your future. It determines. Now I can buy shoes. Because I bought the Bible first. You see, so when you buy the book, you'll be able to buy many kebabs in future. Hey, you'll be sitting there, bring some or more of the kebabs. I mean, today when you go, you'll be counting, give me one, give me two. Even some of you, you have been counting the kebabs in small amount for years that even in future when God blesses you and you can buy kebab you still only buy one so give me one but you need to work with prosperous people who know how to buy they buy all so you bring all my father used to buy kebab in in heaps he buy the heap of kebab and he brings it that's where I learned how to see pros prosperity kebab eating not this one one stick <laughs> <laughs> That's why sometimes you see God has blessed you, but still the kinky and the banku is more than the meat. More. And you, you are not used to eating meat. See, the rice will be a lot, and the meat is small. Two big balls of kinky with a head of a fish, as small as the head of the fish. Don't waste your husband. I tell you, you may, be, you may be surprised. What a good husband you have when you see him lying there dead and you say, what? Don't wait to say that, yeah. Or don't waste your beloved. Like, this beloved is boring. He's boring. The in common, yet dead. The, the in common of the, 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 the brother is not dead, and yet dead. <laughs> Uh, it's not God raps. Look around you. Just look around you and see what you have and see what God has blessed you with. And then benefit from it now. Huh. There was a certain guy. He saw a beautiful girl. Hey! No, he was not a Christian. So he chased the girl. And he cornered her one day and he slept with her. 
after sleeping with her for a few times, he looked at her and said, no, oh, Charlie, next. Do you understand when I say next? And that the next one should come and you should go. I mean, she's, she was nobody. Two years later, he was walking in town. And he saw a very beautiful girl, lady. And he said, I recognize this lady. She looks like that. The one that he said next. But he said, it cannot be her because now she looks like a very rich woman. She was walking in the park. And she had a baby that she was walking with. And she had an umbrella and, I mean, a very sophisticated lady. He said, ah, I've made a mistake. It, it, it cannot be. So he followed the lady. I told you the clock is being rebellious. <laughs> anyway, he followed the lady to see. They said, it cannot be her. Because when I knew she was a small, poor person. Said, ah! Then he followed her and he, she went to a huge mansion. And he said, oh, Count so so and so has married her. A lord, a lord has married this lady. And he said, no, I'm going to get her back. Hey! Tell somebody, hey! So he started a campaign. You see, you, you had the thing, you didn't value it. Somebody has taken the thing. Now you want the thing back. Hey, tell somebody, value what you are seeing or before somebody comes to take it away. So he followed the lady and he came to meet her in the park. He looked at her and said, ah, are you so, so, and so? He said, I am. And she just continued walking with her. The guy followed her. Please, I need to see you. I need to see you. I need to see you. He said, look, I can't. I can't relate. To you. I'm, I can't. I'm now madame. Hey. So, the guy persisted, and she said, I cannot talk to you. So, after some weeks, she sent a message. She said, I will see you. And she told him, there is an opera. And she showed, you know the operas, there are special rooms for private, for kings and queens and so on. She said, during the opera, because I cannot talk with you in public because of my status. Yeah. So she said, during the opera, I'll be in the private room. I will speak to you there. Hey, the guy was, I'm getting my thing back. He went to the opera and he entered the room. She was there. She said, what is it? She said, no, my darling, my darling, I made a mistake. My darling, I, I need you. I, I can't live without you. I'm going to die without you. I will die if you want me. I need you. I need you. I need you. But, but when you hurt me, I, I need you. <laughs> she said it's rubbish. He followed her. They came back to the park. Then she agreed, said, I'll meet you again. Then she met the man again. This was, the man was very persistent. Months. Then finally she told, she met the guy again privately. And she said, okay, I want to admit I'm also in love with you. And I want to come back. So, but on one condition. On one condition. I am not going to have any secret affair with you. It has to be open. You must come publicly and take me from the house. I mean, you must come see the count, declare your intentions openly. I don't want any like I'm having an affair with you on the side. No. Because you were my first lover. So I 
accept it. And the man said, yes, ma'am. Anything I would die for you. I would die for you. You see, when he had her, he wouldn't die for her. He was saying, next, 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 next. So they fixed the appointment. And the guy said he was coming to the house opening. So, of course, he knew where she was, she was in this big mansion. Came to the house, went to the he was shaking. When he got to the door, an elderly lady came to the door and he said, I'm looking for. So and so, she said, yeah, she's here. Come in. He was shaking. I'm going to face the count. And I'm going to tell him, this is my lover whom you have taken. So he took the gentleman, walked with her, with, her, with the lady. Then, instead of walking to, towards the house, they walked to the side of the house. And then they went to the back. When he got to the back, he said, yeah, she's there. Went, they went the lady was in the boys' quarters. So, she opened the door and he saw the lady said, ah, I thought you were there. No, he said, I'm the house help. I'm the house help in the house. <laughs> I'm, I'm the house help in this house. <laughs> I am the house help in the house. So they, they, had, they brought the man to the boys' quarters. <laughs> so when the man entered the room, he said, you are the house up. He just collapsed on the floor. Said, ah! I didn't know that you were the house up. He said, aha, you, you are following me. Because now you see me in a different way. Now you've seen that I'm something. But you are prepared to come and fight for me. Now you've seen that I'm the house help. The man was so shaken. Already now he was shaking before he came. He said, ah, now you are the maid. How were you able to say, oh, yeah, I was holding the madam's child. It's the madam's child that I was walking with in the park and so on. So he told the lady, I'll, I'll, still, you, I'll still marry you. It's okay, I'll still marry And the girl said, oh, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Don't mind. I just wanted to teach you a lesson. Yeah. But, you see, sometimes when something is with you, you see the thing in a way. But then somebody else gets it and the thing is looking at majestic. I say, ah, but I know this is somewhere. It cannot be. So don't waste what you have. Don't waste. Something beautiful, something nice, something great is with you. But you don't see how great it is and how beautiful it is. I've not even started preaching, but the clock is fighting against me. You know. Amen. So don't waste any of the things. Now, there are seven spirits that cause us to waste what we have. Number one, the spirit of Belial or Beli Yahal. It's a, it's a, it's a spirit of, it, it means to make you cheap. Huh? It makes you cheap, good for nothing. So don't cheap in yourself because you are wasting who you are. Amen. What do you think? Don't, don't cheap in yourself. How many men do you want to sleep with? I mean, one lady pastor was saying when she comes to the church, she sees so everybody, she slept with everybody around. She doesn't feel like lifting up her head. The more you sleep, they'll call you school mattress. Do you remember when we were in school, some girls were called school mattress? The school mattress means that it's the mattress on which everybody sleeps. What does it mean? You've cheapened yourself. Don't be a school mattress. Don't cheapen yourself. Ask your neighbor, how many people are you going to sleep with before you, you stop sleeping with people? Ask your neighbor. Tell the person, look, the bishop has asked me to ask you a personal question. How many are you going to? Mercy. Uh, wasting. A lot of people have had a lot of money, but they wasted it. Wasted it, passed through their hands. Millions. One of the ways I'll show you somebody who is a waster 
is somebody who does not build houses when he has money. Yeah. You are a waster. You see, real wealth, that's why buildings are called real estate. It's the only way to convert money into something real is buildings. If you've noticed in the church, we emphasize a lot on buildings. I can show you pictures, plenty, church buildings. All over. Different corners. Because in a day that you have money, you must build. But you see, you, you don't consider yourself as a rebellious son. But you see, you may not know what you are wasting till the day comes. Can I show you how you know that you've wasted when your income reduces? When the day that you used to have so much changes to a day that you don't have so much, that's when you see that you wasted your opportunity. Usually that's how it happens. It happens only after the high income has reduced to a low income. That's when you realize I've wasted. So a lot of people who live, have lived abroad, when they have come to Ghana, they have always felt I wasted my, my money. I could have built, I could have done this, I could have done it, but they don't. Every day, funerals. I mean, I saw one businessman, every day he was taking a large group of people to Papaya. There were some other restaurants on that Osu Road. What, what, are, what are the names of those restaurants? Frankie's, this. Every time he's going, blowing time and paying the bills. And I said, my brother, you are wasting your, you are wasting your money. Eating restaurants and so on is a waste of time. Clothes, shoes, dresses, it's all wasting. Foxes have holes. Foxes are able to build houses for themselves. If you like, watch wildlife and learn something for yourself. Birds have nests, Jesus Christ said. Birds are able to build houses for themselves. Foxes are able to build houses for themselves. How come you, a human being, you are not able to build something for yourself? One day a visitor came to Ghana for one day. He arrived in the night and he left the next night. And he had never been to Africa and I took him round. We started from Osu and we drove. But I took him through Osu. So as we were driving, I saw he was saying that, where is the city? He asked me, where is the city? Where is the city? I said, which city? This is the city. We have, we have, we have already passed through the major part of the city. That's the city. He said, where are the buildings? Where are the top? That's the main difference between Europe and Africa. If you think Ghana is different from, go to Benin, Togo, Nigeria, so all are the same. It's the same, 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 same. No buildings. Foxes have holes. Foxes are able to make holes for themselves to stay in. And birds are able to make nests for themselves to stay in. If you look up into the city, you even find some birds have even managed to find a place to stay here. But you, in spite of all that God has given you, you could not build a house. Oh, you didn't try. You wasted your opportunity, your contract. Your father gave you a house you couldn't make. Only 2% of people who inherit houses are able to make it grow bigger. It's very sad. Though. People inherit, they cannot do anything with it. Hey, a certain guy, his father left him a house. He went to the drinking bar, and as he was drinking, his money got finished. So he told them, I've got an air conditioner in the house. I want to bring the air conditioner to pay for my drink. So he brought the air conditioner, and the accountant made a balance for him. So we, you have drank 30%, and we are owing you this. So he drank the rest of the air conditioner. How can you drink a whole air conditioner until the air conditioner is finished? And that was not the end. He took all the air conditioners one after the other until he drank all the air conditioners in the house. And there was no more air conditioner in the house. This is what people do with inheritance. Something is given to you. It's put in your hand. Look at, look at, look, we are here. Look at us. Look at the church. God is giving you wisdom. Books have been written. Tapes, listen to it. That is why I never hide what I listen to because I know most people will not listen. If I tell you, read this book, read this book, you won't listen. If I tell you, watch wildlife, watch foxes, watch birds, and you will see that everybody has been able to build a house for themselves. But human beings, you don't build houses for themselves. I mean, we in Africa, we'll be looking and we need a loan from IMF so that we can build an estate. 
We are looking to, we are calling on stakeholders to come to the nation to assist us in so, so, and so, and so. Development partners to assist us in our development efforts. So we are calling on them to come. Now, rise up. I know somebody from tech. He built his house himself. He made every block himself. He laid every block himself. He dug every whatever himself. Me, as I'm building, I don't leave it for anybody. Oh. You see the site here, and not only this site, I climb. I have a little girl who supervises my IT teacher. Climb your car. Stand on top. Climb the roof. Go upstairs. Don't leave it for anybody. I count iron rods. I count blocks. I count sand. I count stones. I'm there myself. I won't leave it for anybody at all. Hey. I should leave it for somebody. And you saw that you bring me invoices. I should sit in my office. You bring me invoices. Am I a fool? You just write invoices for me. I should pay bill. Okay. Then I'm mad. I will never pay. I will never pay. I'll fight with you and I will find the things myself and calculate it myself. Ah, I cannot waste it. What God has given me. At this time, there's strength to build and I'm building. When the time comes when there's no much so strength to build, I would have built. Yeah. Right now in the north, from Tamale up, we are, are getting to the stage where we are about to roof about 75 church buildings all over. Different, different towns. Well, if you go to the, the north, you see mosque and lighthouse. You see the two of them are there. Yeah. Well, I can't do anything about the time. But what I want to tell you, look carefully at what you are. Look at the person sitting next to you. You see, maybe it's the, it's the, it's the beloved you are looking. Look at, look at the next person. It's the beloved you are looking for. It's sitting by you. I ask the neighbor, look, do you have a beloved? Do you, do you have a beloved? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. You may be the one. You may be the chosen one. Some of you come to the church, you are feeling lonely, but the person is right by you. Charlie, what did you see here? Right here. That's it. It is a blessing. All the pastors that God has given us, let us appreciate them. Let's not waste the things, the books, the tapes, the church God has given you. Don't chip in yourself when God has made you expensive. Do you know what a pastor in, in Seattle once told me? Seattle. He has had every bonky, Kenneth Hagen, everybody has been in his church several times. He told me something. He said, I have never seen a pastor who has accomplished as much as you. He was talking to me. At your age, I've never seen anybody in the world who has accomplished what you have accomplished at your age. That's what he told me. Yeah? I can't lie to you. I can't lie to you. That's what he told me. He said, I, I have never... Recently, I went, I visited him in, in America, and then he took me around his house, his bedroom, and so on. When we got to his bedroom, his wife said, do you see your books there? He said, they are, he didn't put them there because you were coming. They are there. He reads them. A person with a lot of millionaires in his church. He said, I've never seen anybody who has accomplished as much as you have accomplished at your age. And you are here. Get it on. Give us a one meat sausage roll. One al Do you have Alvaro? There is a certain new drink called Alvaro. Do you have Alvaro? These days I only drink Alvaro. Can I have one Alvaro and one, uh, one sausage kebab? And you pass by the book. Mike Maddox said, developing countries despise the wisdom in America. They burn the American flag and burn effigies of the American president, but they want the American money. You despise it. You can make fun of the person, but you want the money that the person has. Through the wisdom that he had, that has given him what he has. You despise the wisdom, but you want the person's money. That's why at a certain point, people stop giving away money. Many times when I bring suggestions, I make suggestions, people will laugh. Say, oh, get away, disappointed European. Oh, bro, ni pete. Oh, go, go away. Right, go to your country. Is that what you do in your country? Which is my country? Which, where, where is my country? I've been here since I was born. 
If I'm not from here, then Rollins is also not from Ghana. Yeah, then we are all not Ghanaians. I mean, if you want to start nationality crisis now, we can start. We can start discussions after church. People look at me and say, oh, maybe you wait. The bishop, maybe he went to school. I've never been to any school abroad before. All my school is from Ghana. I've never been abroad to school. So, oh, he, maybe he was his father. To, oh, my father didn't take me anywhere. I went to school, nursery school here, primary school here, secondary school here, university here. I've never been to a school abroad. Everything is Ghanaian. And I'm sharing with you. And you're looking. <sighs> <sighs> You slept throughout the night. You are sleeping in the church too. Hey! You know, something surprised me one day. A multi-millionaire invited me to come and give a lecture. I mean, a millionaire. And I was surprised. A millionaire, he does, he's, he does not believe in being in God. But one day when he saw lighthouse signboard in Central African Republic, in Bangui, he said, mm, there is something about this church. It is everywhere. When he was introducing me to speak, he didn't use any notes. When he was introducing me to the lecture, he, he, he spoke about me for 20 minutes off the cuff. Somebody I've never met before. He used 20 minutes to introduce me. And some of us, we are in this church, they ask you, even my name, you don't even know my name. It's true, I'm your pastor, you don't know, you don't know, my, you don't know my name. Okay, let me just uh, do an investigation. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You see, I don't want to embarrass you. It's, today is Sunday morning. Stand, stand on your feet and let's close. We've closed, we've closed. <laughs> it's Sunday morning, it's Sunday morning, please. <laughs> Mercy. Ask your neighbor, do you know your pastor's name? Do you, by the way, do you know his name? Hmm. <laughs> Lift your hand and thank God that you have heard his word this morning. God has spoken to you today. Oh, yes, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunities, for what you give us, the blessings you give us. Help us not to waste it, Lord. Help us not to waste your word that is coming to us every day. The spirit that is coming to us, the opportunity, the grace, the gifts. Thank you, Lord. We, we give you thanks. And we pledge, Lord, that we are not going to waste like the prodigal son who wasted his all, everything that he had until he was a poor man. Help us not to waste it and make the most of it. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Foxes have holes. Beds have nests. Give us the grace to build houses. In 2010, we declare an era of building has begun. Building of houses, building of mansions, opening of buildings. We declare the grace of God has come so that we may not waste His blessing that is upon our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Father, for your great blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. And as every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you are here this morning, you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you want to say, Pastor, please pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to give my life to God. Maybe somebody invited you, but you know deep down in your heart, you are not a born-again Christian. But you want to say, Pastor, help me to know Jesus. I want Jesus to save me. I want Jesus to wash away my sins. I want to be a new person. In 2010, I want Jesus to wash away my sins and make me a new person. If you are here like that, wherever you are, lift up your right hand and I'm going to pray with you. Lift it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see all your hands. Lift it up. God bless you. Pastor, pray with me. I want the blood of Jesus to wash away my sins. I want to be a new person. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Lift up your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you've lifted your hand, I want you to come to me in the front here. Come from the back. Come from the side. Come from wherever you are. Come. God bless you. Clap for them as they come. Clap for them as you come. From the back, from wherever you are. I surrender to Jesus. All 
to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Come on, sing it again. I surrender all to Jesus. I surrender all. I surrender all. Come on. Don't waste this opportunity to come to the cross, to come to Jesus, to be born again. Come to the Lord right now. To thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Lift your hands in front here. And everybody lift your hands. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Today, I receive Jesus as my Savior and my Master. Oh God, I am a sinner. Please have mercy on me. Please wash away my sins. Make me a new person, oh God. From today, I give my life to Jesus. I give my life to God. Please write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Say thank you, Jesus Christ, for saving my soul today. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you look this way, you see one of our pastors waving a hand. I want you to just go with her and then you come back and join us. All right? God bless you.